Hello everyone. Today is Friday, April 3rd. I am Elena Myers and I am joined virtually here with Senator Susan Kent, Representative Chu Zhang, and Representative Steve Sandell. Thank you all for joining me today. We are currently at a stay-at-home order for the state of Minnesota and on March 27th, there was a CARES Act that was passed into law. And I was wondering if Senator Kent, if you would be able to speak to that law a little bit and kind of tell us what that entails. Thank you, Elena, and uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk about, you know, just some of the important steps that are being taken both at the federal level and at the state level um, to really help us uh, get through this just really challenging um, and challenging time that is just uncharted for Minnesota families, certainly for people in um, our communities here in Woodbury and uh, uh, Oakdale and, Lam and Landfall and Maplewood as well. Um, we were really relieved to see the federal uh, government pass uh, the CARES Act uh, about a week ago. I kind of lose all track of time here. Because um, what we know is in, here in Minnesota, we have to balance our budget. We cannot deficit spend. Um, and so we really rely on the federal government to provide so many of these resources that are going to make such a huge difference to get our families and our schools and our businesses and our hospitals and healthcare system through this really challenging time. Um, people are using the metaphor of a bridge, and I think that's really important. We need to provide that foundation to, to carry our, our people and our systems and our economy through until we're able to get back up on our feet and, and, and start operating um, normally again. Um, and so I was really glad to see that. Uh, some of the things that we know are coming from the CARES Act um, will be individual support. Um, uh, so households with incomes under $150,000 or $75,000 for singles are gonna get $1,200 per adult and $500 from, uh, for children. And you know there are other details that come along with that, of course. But that's just you know hopefully, and if people are using um, direct deposit for their taxes, that means they'll get it faster. Uh, so that's a, an opportunity there. Um, <clears throat> unemployment and benefits. I'm really grateful that here at the state level, right away, we were able to um, uh, get that moving and get that process going, and we're just expanding it as we move forward. Um, but help from the federal government there too is going to make a very big difference um, both to businesses and to the people receiving the unemployment benefits. And speaking of small businesses, and we know that, you know, about half of Minnesotans work for small businesses um, and they are just not in the same sort of uh, position as larger corporations to sort of weather these kinds of storms. So everything that we can do both at the state level and at the federal level um, is going to make a difference. And there were a number of um, grants and loans that are being offered. Um, it's, it is complicated and it's time consuming and I just actually got off a, a hearing of, um, on this very issue and, and we're gonna all do what we can to, to ease this process so that we can support um, local businesses. And you know, for local businesses that are open, I just encourage everybody where you can to support these local, these local community businesses that um, are gonna need our help more than ever so that they'll be there for us when we, when we get through this. Um, and then last but not least, um, there will be significant support coming to the states. We're still sort of sorting through that, um, uh, which will allow us to do more and then also to like our schools more directly and also to um, some local units of government. So there are just a number of things that are gonna, that are in, gonna make a big difference. But I have to say too, I think this is a starting point. We're gonna, we're gonna need more congressional help moving forward. That's great. Thank you so much for that update. And I know Minnesotans are really kind of interested in what this all means for them. So I kind of wanted to ask um, you, Representative Zhang, um, for the residents of Woodbury, the ones that you kind of are represent right now, can you kind of explain a little bit what those individuals, small businesses and families might be seeing in the coming weeks? Senator Kent uh, talked about, talked on it a little bit, uh, you know, about the individual households um, below uh, one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars each. Uh, adult is expected expected to get uh, twelve hundred dollars and then five hundred uh, per uh, per dependent child, um, and the reduction is like fifty dollars per every thousand thousand uh, dollar income that's above that threshold. And so uh, you know we're relieved to see that uh, happening. I know. We've been receiving a lot of letters, a lot of calls from folks that are going through tough times right now, uh, getting laid off, uh, reduced hours, and so uh, anything that can help them. Um, in, in terms of small businesses, um, as far as the CARES Act, I know there's the Paycheck Protection Program 
to kind of help. Uh, it's a loan to kind of help businesses stay afloat until June of 2020. Uh, there's the expanded uh, U.S. Small Business uh, Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program uh, that was included in the CARES Act. And, and on my Facebook page, on my uh, new weekly newsletters, I'll provide links to them. So there's further details for folks at home. And of course, there's all, all sorts of updated business tax provisions um, that are in the CARES Act that are geared towards assisting or relieving uh, you know, the tax burden for small businesses that are in the CARES Act. And so uh, there's a lot of variations for different types of businesses or different size of businesses. So I, I encourage our small businesses to take a look at that and so try to um, explore these options and uh, apply for, you know, we have state programs and federal programs and uh, we're trying to encourage folks to apply for both because sometimes um, if you get the federal program support, you know, you might not necessarily qualify for the state one or vice versa. And so um, telling to, you know, get information out there to our small businesses uh, here in Woodbury, Oakdale, Maplewood. Uh, so trying to get them uh, some support. Great. Thank you so much for that update. I know there's a lot of moving components right now. So to try to figure out everything and still trying to figure out what all is in the CARES Act, I know has been a lot for individuals, families, and you guys have all been working very hard. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Representative Sandal, with that insanity for many Minnesotans, I know you guys have been working diligently to figure out ways to help and everything. Is there anything else right now that the House is kind of working through in regards to COVID-19 that you can tell us about? Well, I'll try to do the best I can, and too, and Susan, you'll have to remind me if I, uh, I, I miss some things, but um, I want to mention first uh, education. I'm on a couple of education committees and I pay close attention to what's going on in the South Washington County schools. And uh, I also uh, represent part of it, so, uh, Stillwater um, uh, schools and um, District 622. Um, those districts really are working hard and are un under uh, real pressure to provide the services, not only the um, tele-education or the distance education, which is necessary to um, keep kids uh, uh, learning and abreast of uh, their lessons and the teachers and, uh, and educational aides are doing the best they can with that. There's also issues of providing uh, uh, food and also and child care for um, um, essential workers. Those are also burdens for the local uh, school districts. Some federal uh, funds are going to reimburse the uh, schools for child care and um, uh, uh, for um, um, preparing and dis distributing food, but it is, but it has been a a, a, a real responsibility. Um, there are the other thing of, about education. I think uh, is that um, it's provided us with um, an idea of what we need to pay some attention to. There are some school districts which are at a real disadvantage as far as uh, internet connections and broadband uh, uh, is concerned. Um, I spoke to a, a fellow the other day, the superintendent in Fairmont, his wife teaches in Austin, and he says in one of the small cities, one of the small towns in, in, in her district doesn't even have cell phone connection, which is really um, amazing these days. I know that uh, uh, one of our friends in the, in the um, um, in the house uh, is from International Falls, and he says that the broadband connections up there are so thin that uh, he and his wife cannot be on their computers at the same time. So um, uh, the school districts are doing a great job. Uh, teachers and moms and dads have been doing a, a, a terrific job as well. But um, we need to um, we need to go forward on this and, and pay attention to what this is going to look like in the future. Um, we uh, uh, had a floor session. Was it uh, was it March twenty sixth too, or uh, that that we got together and were able to pass a uh, a budget bill? Susan made mention to uh, the restrictions that we have on our on our budget. Um, it was a three hundred million dollar uh, bill, huge bill, and it's going to have some real repercussions. It it uh, it made uh, I think it 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 it. It was a great effort on behalf of the House and the Senate, Republicans and Democrats, to try to meet immediate needs of people in Minnesota. But we are under the restriction of a, of a balanced budget, and the federal uh, response was, as Susan said earlier, terrific. And and uh, the early letters that I got is, and two talked about the letters that he got. Um, people were really frightened. They were um, um, in moments of uh, real despair, and I think uh, the federal government has uh, has responded. All that money has not been uh, uh, sent out to the states yet, but we're working on that. Um, our next um, floor session is going to be the uh, 24th of April. I think that's right. Is that right, Susan? 
Um, no, the fourteenth. I'm sorry, the four, <laughs> the fourteenth. <laughs> I'd be late. My vote wouldn't be uh, counted. The fourteenth of April. And um, uh, Melissa Hortman, who's our speaker, uh, said the other day on a conference call uh, late in the evening, said that everything is changing daily, and it really is. Uh, Susan in the Senate as as our minority leader, and and uh, has to negotiate with the majority leader Paul Gazelka, um with the minority and majority letters in the House and, and also with the governors. That's really tough. Um, everybody wants the best for the people that we represent. But the way to get there is, um, is always a problem. Um, I asked about the insulin bill, which has been over our head for now almost a year. And um, um, uh, Mike Howard, who's the, the uh, author of that bill, Mike's from Richfield, says that he thinks the details of that bill can be can be uh, um, uh, finalized and, and by April 14th we'll be able to pass that. That would be great. Uh, issues of uh, providing um, uh, hourly school workers with their wages, um, that's been an issue of contention and we think that that's going to be uh, uh, satisfied. And another really important one is providing the opportunity for uh, first for nurses and uh, first response people to be uh, covered by uh, uh, workers' compensation, all of those are have content. Uh, all of those are have elements of contention, but we think that they might be able to uh, be resolved by the 14th. Those those would be huge. Um, in addition to that, I think uh, uh, Susan and two and I all agree that we're here to try to provide help and support. We don't have all the answers. I, I'm, I'm really confident of Governor Walz. I think Jan Malkin's been doing a great job. And Steve Grove at the um, Department of uh, Employment and um, uh, Economic Development is great. Um, uh, that deed site uh, is terrific and um, we're doing the best we can, but we need to hear from um, you and people like you uh, who um, can give us some help in the, in the direction too. That's, that, no, that was an excellent update, absolutely. Um, like, like you said, everything's constantly changing and you're getting lots of calls in and out. And I wanted to speak to you a little bit, Senator, about what is that looking like for the Senate right now with the constant changing, every day's different. I think Walls is actually on maybe even right now giving an update. So could you kind of explain kind of what that meant for the Senate right now? Right, well, and it really has been an amazing um, opportunity of us all working really well together. The House and the Senate are very well coordinated um, and in constant communication with um, the governor and his administration, who I think everybody just agrees. He has just provided um, strong, decisive, clear leadership, clear explanations of, of what's going on. Uh, the decisions that are being made are not easy. Um, deciding that we need to close restaurants and bars and other local businesses is hard. And we know that it has just really hard impacts on um, owners and employees. We also know that our economy can't rebound until people feel safe going back to work, going back out into society. Um, and so we have to do this kind of one thing at a time. Um, and so, and, and then what we need to do is support those local businesses and those employees, you know, as a bridge through this process. Um, you know, what we were able to do on the 26th was pretty um, uh, impressive in terms of taking care of some of these just fundamentals like our childcare um, infrastructure. Um, uh, the food insecurity, we did some funding that will help the regional food banks as well as, for example, uh, Christian Cupboard in Oakdale that serves our communities here in the East Metro. Um, housing assistance, which is so important because, you know, we just passed April 1st and people's first rent payments are due since this has all started up. We need to make sure that we're, we're creating that infrastructure and this bill started that process. And like Steve talked about, you know, we are going through our next round now talking about what will pass and we're, we're planning to come back together on April 14th. Um, and so the, the priorities right now include things like, um, as he was saying, uh, workers comp, uh, protections um, for our first responders and healthcare workers, and we're real close to having some resolution on that one. Um, some we did not get some things done for our schools that need to be done, and so we're continuing to work on that as well. And I'm, I'm hopeful we'll get there. More housing work. Um, uh, uh, let's see what else. You know, one of the things that um, has been really challenging um, in our society is uh, discrimination and, frankly, hate crimes against Asian Americans during this time. Um, in uh, in the Senate, Senator Fong Her, who is on the east side of St. Paul, um, right next to my district, has been a real leader in this, and I know uh, uh, Representative Zhang has well in our in our community. Um, and there have been some pretty unfortunate stories coming out of Woodbury, um, and we need to do better. We need to take care of our neighbors. We need to recognize that this is a virus. It's not about 
um, any group of people and all, all Minnesotans need to be um, protected. And so we're looking at some legislation that will establish a hotline for people to report some of these concerns and, and just help us get a better handle on it and make sure that we're doing the outreach and the education uh, to make sure that all Minnesotans understand that that's just, we, we've got to do better by each other. Um, and then there are other things. Um, some of these are just more minor, um, like something we did last time um, was to make sure that if your driver's license expires during this time frame, that you don't feel like you have to go out and get it renewed. We're doing forgiveness on those types of, of deadlines and, and just to ease that burden. Um, we have to look forward to elections. Um, what is this going to mean for our election system coming up in November, making sure that people will be able to exercise their right to vote, but feel like they can do it safely. Um, and, and to make sure we can run a, a good open election system in the process that relies on election judges right now. And we need to make sure that, that we'll be able to, to stand up the same kind of excellent election system that Minnesota always does. So it's a, it's a whole range of things that, that we're all having to look at and uh, talk about to make sure that we're, we're taking care of Minnesotans in all aspects of our lives as we go through this. Thank you so much for that update. Yes, I I know Minnesotans up and I appreciate you having some answers and still working as diligently as you guys all are. And there's so many, there's the CARES Act and there's everything going on with COVID, but there's still legislation that needs to be passed outside of that. So I was wondering if any of you in these final minutes have like any kind of any more information or anything else that you'd kind of like to say to your the people that you represent right now. Two, what do you think? Oh, um, you know, I, I think to just uh, generally, um, I believe that Minnesotans, we will get through this. Um, you know, I think seeing um, our local Woodbury businesses stepping up and volunteering to make face masks for our hospitals and people donating young, you know, individuals, helping each other to learn online at school. Um, you know, our nurses, our doctors that are from Woodbury and Maplewood that are being out there on the front lines fighting every day. We will do what we can in the House and in the Senate to, to help make sure that they get the support that they need. Um, I know our businesses, small businesses are taking a hit, uh, but we really want to be there to support them any way that we can. Uh, I think a lot of the economics that we've been using has been thrown out the window because I mean this is something that is just totally out of the ordinary straight from the movies or something you know and so we're uh, really trying to respond every way that we can in a responsible and thoughtful way but also you know we understand it's time sensitive um, and so yeah we're meeting online zoom uh, we might not be at the Capitol, but you know, me and Steve were online zooming and Facebook living, and I'm sure I know Senator Kent was on the radio uh, from home, and so we're trying to do all that we can to stay in touch. I want to say, Elena, that uh, I guess I want to take uh, two approaches. One is that um, I uh, I want to express uh, all of our concerns about the seriousness of this issue. Uh, all of us are in this together, and um, uh, there's no easy way out. We uh, can depend on science, we can depend on our relationships with individuals, and we can depend, I guess, on, on government to some extent. But this, uh, it's not easy, and um, it's something that we uh, take seriously, whether we're in government or uh, other parts of our lives. The other thing is I want to be optimistic, too. I want to um, say that this is teamwork, and... Um, We'll uh, accomplish things uh, if all of us play our part and do it as well as we can. I sent out a note the other day that um, there's something about the blues that makes you feel good. And um, even though uh, blues singers might describe tough times, uh, by the end of the song, uh, you feel stronger and you believe that you aren't alone. And uh, I want to believe that we aren't alone. Um, I'm, I'm enormously grateful. I say this frequently, but uh, Susan and two are great teammates of mine. and. Uh, I want to say thanks to them and um, thanks to you too and Community TV for doing this uh, service. It's uh, a, uh, a serious moment in our lives and it's something that we all want to uh, uh, get through. And I would just wrap up by echoing so much of that. Um, you know, uh, this is hard and people are frightened for their themselves and their loved ones, their neighbors, um, and, and just their basic health and well-being. The economic risks and, and hardships are real. Um, but as I said on the floor the other day, when we passed the most recent bill, 
um, Minnesotans, that's who we are. We do this together. We're the people that leave the last slice of hot dish. We won't take that one, you know, and we, we shovel each other's driveways and we're going to get through this too. And um, it's because we care about each other and we're going to take care of each other and we're going to get through this and we're going to be strong on the other side. Absolutely. That's, and I'm so appreciative that all of you were able to join me here because it really is a very much a team effort and very much that Minnesotan spirit of working together, especially in times like this. So thank you all so much for joining me and have a good day.